a brutal 10.40% drop just on November 6th, 2025, closing way down at $8.84. Yeah, that one day really set up one of the most high stakes conflicting narratives we've seen in a while. It's uh, almost a perfect case study. You've got these really bad fundamentals colliding head on with some, well, powerful technical positioning. And their primary weapon seems to be the Q3 earnings disaster. Just how bad was that fundamental failure that kicked this whole downturn off? Well, it was bad on two fronts, which is pretty toxic for a growth stock like this. First, they missed badly on profitability. The expectation was a loss of negative 0.5 cents per share, right? But the company actually lost negative 0.9 cents. Wow. Nearly double the expected loss. Exactly. That's not just a small miss. No, that margin suggests, I mean, significant operational issues, doesn't it? Not just a slight hiccup. And that fundamental weakness then led directly to what the bears are calling their kill shot, this insider action. On November 5th, like right after these terrible earnings were announced, the CFO, senior VP, and treasurer Todd Glickman dumped 96,313 shares. And the value of that sale, it was over $1.02 million. And the technical chart structure just followed suit, didn't it? Oh, it shattered completely. The yep. stock had this key psychological floor, the 50-day moving average, sitting right at $9.13. By closing down at $8.84, the bears confirmed they broke that level. The bears have had their victory lap, definitely, but the bulls must have something powerful to counter a 10% drop fueled by bad earnings and insider selling. What are they pointing to that maybe the headline readers are missing? Well, the bulls are basically banking everything on one massive uh, contrarian data point. It's the short squeeze rocket fuel. The short interest in NVTS is absolutely staggering. 29.22% of the float. 29%. So almost 30 out of every 100 shares traded have been borrowed by short sellers betting the price goes down. That is a colossal number. It means nearly a third of the floating shares must eventually be bought back just to cover those short bets. Exactly. So the bullish argument is this, that negative 10.40% drop. It was emotional an overextended panic, maybe a final gift to the really aggressive short sellers. The bears have become so successful, so aggressive, that they've actually created the conditions for their own potential demise at almost 30% short interest. It's a colossal powder keg. Any sudden upturn, any spark, could force mandatory panicked buying. And the bulls aren't just relying on that short interest number alone, right? They're looking at how sophisticated money seems to be positioning itself despite all the disaster news. Let's talk about that unusual options data you mentioned. Right, the put call ratio. It's extremely bullish at 0.32. Now, that 0.32 is critical. It tells us that for every single put option, that's a bet the stock is going down, there are roughly three call options being bought. Bets the stock will go up. This doesn't really look like retail panic. This looks more like smart money setting up long positions with high conviction, actually positioning for a rebound. That really separates professional conviction from just headline fear, doesn't it? What about the RSI? The relative strength index that measures overbought or oversold conditions. Yeah, the RSI is currently sitting at 39.73. Now, officially oversold usually triggers below 30. But bulls see this level just under 40 as a classic buy the blood opportunity. The idea is the selling pressure has eased off just enough to set up a reversal before the indicator hits that sub-30 level and triggers mass buying from systematic funds. They're trying to get ahead of it. And when we zoom out a bit, look at the big picture analyst view, they haven't entirely thrown in the towel either, which kind of reinforces this bullish narrative, doesn't it? No, not at all. The consensus among the seven analysts covering the stock is still a buy. And maybe more importantly, Needham, a major firm, actually reiterated their price target of $13 on November 4th. That was right before the collapse. So that figure suggests, you know, a potential 50% upside from these depressed prices if the growth story eventually gets back on track. Okay, so the bull thesis in a nutshell. Bad news is priced in. Bears are dangerously over leveraged with that huge 29% short interest. And they believe they're setting up a forced buying event the mother of all short squeezes, just waiting for some kind of spark. Okay, this brings us to the practical map for you, the listener, because this whole war, it's likely going to be won or lost at very specific, identifiable price points. This is where the bulls and bears have drawn their front lines. Yeah, we need to define those key levels clearly. So for the bulls' defense, the absolute front line is $8.82. That was the low of the day on November 6th. If they can't hold that level, Honestly, you should expect another major wave of selling. Risk management systems will likely get triggered. Okay, so if they manage to defend that $8.82, that signals the immediate selling pressure is maybe gone, right? Regardless of the bad news, 
What's the next key trench they need to hold above that? Right above that low is $8.90. Think of it as the trend trench. It's a key technical support area. And then if everything just completely fails for the bulls, the $5.53 level, that 200-day moving average, that's really the last stand. Losing the 200-day would pretty much kill the long-term bullish outlook. All right, now for the Bears' defense, the fortifications they've built. The first wall the bulls absolutely must reclaim is the one the Bears just conquered. $9.13, that former 50-day moving average. Since it was broken support, it's now expected to be heavy resistance. Exactly. If the bulls manage to reclaim $9.13, that's the first real crack you'll see in the bear's defense. The next critical resistance level after that is $9.83. Why is that one so important? Because that's where the stock opened on November 6th before it gapped down so hard. The bulls really need to fill that gap to prove the downward momentum is truly over. And the final fortress. The one that, if breached, could trigger real panic among the shorts. That's the psychological fortress. Mm. $10, just breaking $10 flat, signals a complete momentum reversal. And it puts uh, maximum pressure on that massive 29% short interest position we keep talking about. Okay, let's walk through the bull case prediction then. If they actually manage to win this fight, how does this squeeze ignite using those specific levels as the triggers? Okay, step by step, it has to start with a hold. NVTS has to defend that $8.82, $8.90 zone. Maybe for a day, maybe two, mm -hmm. sellers need to get exhausted, volume dries up a bit, and then you get maybe the first small positive close. That's the spark. Got it. So that spark then becomes the tripwire when the price crosses back above the 50-day MA at $9.13. Huh. Why is crossing $9.13 potentially so devastating for the shorts? Because remember, that was the last sort of comfortable technical level for them, the line they broke through. Crossing back above $9.13 triggers that first oh-no moment for the more risk-averse shorts. They start covering their positions, buying shares back to lock in whatever profit they have left. And that mandatory buying starts forcing the price higher. Right, which creates the cascade effect. That forced buying pushes the price up towards $9.83, filling that gap we mentioned. Now, any mid-level shorts who maybe got in between 9 and 9.50, they're starting to lose money, they panic buy, and this validates that bullish options market, the 0.32 put call ratio. And then, potentially, the explosion. The price smashes through $10. This could trigger mass margin calls for any overleveraged shorts. Suddenly, that entire 29% short float is under immense pressure to buy back shares pretty much simultaneously. Sellers just disappear. And that creates the supply-demand shock that could send the stock flying violently, maybe toward targets like Needham's $13. Wow. It's the ultimate turnaround scenario, isn't it? Turning the bear's massive fundamental victory into potentially their most violent technical defeat. You know, if we connect this whole NVTS battle to the bigger picture, this conflict is just a perfect illustration of market leverage in action. You've got these te terrible, genuinely frightening fundamentals and a highly public insider betrayal on one side, battling against this huge technical instability risk caused by that massive short position on the other. Yeah, the market's really sitting on a razor's edge here, isn't it? Waiting to see if that fundamental fear wins out or if technical leverage forces the issue. And the immediate deciding factor for you watching this will be those battle lines we defined. Keep a very close eye on $8.82 as that crucial support the line the bulls simply cannot lose. And watch $9.13 as the first wall the bulls absolutely must reclaim. The side that breaks and holds these immediate levels likely determines the fate of NVTS for the rest of 2025. So what does this all mean for you? Well, beyond just the immediate volatility here in NVTS, this battle really shows us how fundamental data can sometimes be completely overridden by technical positioning. Sometimes, it seems, the biggest potential short squeeze setup is born directly out of the worst possible news. And maybe think about this. What does the sheer size of this short interest, that 29% imply, about the overall stability and maybe the health of leveraged bets in today's market? Regardless of where this particular stock actually ends up, it's certainly something to consider as you watch this war unfold. It really is a fascinating look at where psychology and you know cold, hard data intersect in the market. Thanks for diving deep with us today.